So this is lesson 4-4, which is linear inequalities in two variables. Our essential question is, how does the graph of a linear inequality in two variables help you identify the solutions of the inequality? So our first example, we're going to graph two different inequalities, and we're going to talk about what the different symbols mean for your graph. So if we look at this first one, so let me get my xy axis here. So if I look here, anytime I have something that is or equal to, so it could be less than or equal to or greater than or equal to, that tells me it's going to be a solid line. Whereas down here, there's no or equal to, so that tells me this one's going to be a dashed line. I'll get this one set up at the same time. Okay, and then we'll talk about the shading here in a second. So if I graph this, my y-intercept's negative 1, so I'm going to go down here to negative 1. And then my slope, if there's no number with the x, remember it's just a 1, So and it's a positive, so I'm going to go up 1 over 1, up 1 over 1. Okay, and then I'm going to connect those with a solid line because this one is or equal to. Now let's use a highlighter here, and let's shade. So if you look here, this says y is less than or equal to my equation. So if y is less than, that means I'm going to shade below the line. Okay, so then if we go back to this bottom graph here, it also has a y-intercept of 1 and a slope of positive 1. Okay. But this one I'm connecting with a dashed line because it's not or equal to. And then if you notice on this one, it says y is greater than. So that means we're going to shade above the line. If you're ever not sure about where to shade, pick a point, any point. I always like to pick 0, 0 because... Um, 0, 0 is either going to work or not. So if we look at the top graph, if I plug 0, 0, and I'm still on highlighter here. If I plug in 0, 0, I would get 0 is less than or equal to, oops, 0, 0 minus 1. So I would get 0 is less than or equal to negative 1. That's not true. That's a false statement. So that means I would not be shading where 0, 0 is on my graph. But if I come down here to the bottom one, 0 is greater than 0 minus 1. Is 0 bigger than negative 1? Yes, it is. So that's why the bottom one, 0, 0, is in the shaded region. Okay, our next example says the science club sells t-shirts and keychains to raise money. How many t-shirts and keychains could they sell to meet or exceed their goal? So it says their goal is $500 and... Um, they sell the t-shirts for $10 each and the keychains for $2 each. So I'm going to write an inequality here. So let's make t-shirts x and keychains y. It's always good to define our variables. So I'm going to say 10 times x plus 2 times y. And we want that to be greater than or equal to 500. So I am going to use the cover-up method again on this. So if we find our x-intercept, if we cover up the y, it'd be 10x equals 500, so x equals 50. And if I cover up the x to find y, I get 250. So I'm going to go to x and put a dot at right about where 50 is. Oh, that's 60. <laughs> okay, 40. Here's 50. Okay, and then on my y, I'm going to go to 250. So it's going by 40s. Okay, so then I'm going to connect those two dots. And we want to think about where is our solution region going to be on this one. So if we, th if we think about... Um, Let's put 0, 0 in, because 0, 0 is always a good number to plug in. So if I plug in 0 and 0 for x and y, I would get that 0 is greater than or equal to 500. Well, that's not true. So that means that 0, 0 will not be shaded, which means I'm going to shade the opposite side of the line. 
So this, everything above the line here would be my shaded region. So any solution would be in that shaded region. So I could say maybe, let's go here back to the pen. So I could say 40, so X was t-shirts. So I could say 40 t-shirts and 120 keychains. That would be one solution that would get me above 500. I could also say um, just 80 t-shirts would be enough. Okay, so any point in that shaded region is a solution. Okay, our next example is how do we write an inequality from a graph? So kind of like y equals mx plus b, we're going to use that um, to fill in our inequality. So I'm going to keep the y. I want to figure out the slope. So if you look here, we're going up 1 over 1, up 1 over 1. So that means my slope's going to be a positive 1 with the x. And then my y-intercept is down here at negative 3. So that's the equation part. Now we have to figure out what direction to make the inequality symbol. So you'll notice that we shaded above the line. That tells me that y is greater than. And then notice that the line is a solid line, which tells me it's going to be greater than or equal to. So this right here would be the inequality for that graph. Okay, and our last examples are going through horizontal and vertical lines. So let's look at this. Okay, so x is greater than or equal to 3. So remember, x, if it only touches the x-axis, then it's a vertical line. So we're going to draw a vertical line. I'm going to make it a solid line because it's or equal to. So I'm going to go to x equals 3. Draw a vertical line, just like that. And then we're going to shade. So we have to figure out which, which direction do we shade. This says x is greater than 3. So we want numbers that are bigger than 3, which would be to that right side of your line. Okay, if we go over here, we know if it's y equals, that's a horizontal line. And this one's not or equal to. So I'm going to go to y equals 2, and I'm going to make a dashed line. Okay, and then if we're shading this, it says y is less than 2. So the numbers that y is less than 2 would be below the line. Okay, so that is how we graph linear inequalities.